Welcome back, Sons of Rust. This is Nick from Beer and Bat Reps, and this is our unit by unit breakdown of Space Wolves in 9th edition Warhammer 40k. Today we're focusing on Njal Stormcaller. He's a psyker for the Space Wolves that wears Terminator armor and has a pet bird on his shoulder. <laughs> so I have had no experience with him, so we're going to go through everything stratagems that'll work, strategies tactics we're going to take a look at the model we're going to go through the lore and background we're going to see what his points are his power level ways we can use him and whether or not i personally would use him all right guys first things first the model i think it looks pretty great to be honest i know i say that about most warhammer models but his stance is great he looks like he's really using wind behind him to just push a spell forward or sorry, a psychic attack. The sculpt is actually really good. I like that he's not focused on some kind of huge axe or hammer or something like that. It's just his staff. It's an old man and his staff, just like Gandalf. And I think it looks really good. I like the wolf pelt on his head. I like his kind of hair and bangs coming out from under his psychic hood. He's got a nice beard. He's got all the normal space wolf talismans and wolf pelts that you need. And then he has this really strange bird. The bird is probably my least favorite part of it. But it's part of his fluff and his lore. And it's his little buddy. So, you know, you can't leave home without that. But the rest of it looks really good. If you've ever seen the old Nial model before he was Terminator armor, he's basically standing in like a come at me bro stance with his staff in one hand and his bird in the other hand and the bird itself is also holding its wings outstretched it looks pretty goofy i'm sure there's a lot of loyal longtime players that prefer that model because there's always those type of players out there but as far as the most current model you can get i really like him I'm not a fan too much of power armor. I prefer Primaris or Terminators, and so this fits the bill, and I think he looks really good. I like the staff with the wolf skull on the end of it and the runes down the staff. He's got a nice pistol and holster where you can grab it. This looks really good. I haven't seen the 360. I assume the back just has a nice wolf pelt, nothing much to it. But yeah, this is a pass for me. This is a good, this is a good model. I mean, it is fine cast, so you got to hope you got a good sculpt that's not bent or warped. But other than that, it's a pretty good looking model. Let's take a look at the lore. The Storm That Walks. The barbarian tribes of Fenris believe the most powerful sky warriors can bend the savage elements themselves to their will. Njal Stormcaller is a living proof of that belief. The skies are his to command, and he takes fierce delight in summoning ice-toothed blizzards and howling gales with which to scatter and destroy those who stand in his path. As a tribesman, Njal was a vital and fierce warrior, flame red of hair and forked of beard. When his tribe took to the ocean one year, they were attacked by their rivals, the Paleskins. Njal was in the thick of the fight. Not only did he repel the borders, but he counterattacked with vigor, leaping from oar to oar to board the enemy boat. He fought with such fury that even the full-blooded warriors of the other tribe feared to face him. After the battle, Njal lay on the blood-slick deck with a spear point piercing his heart. His wound did not heal and he would have passed on into the sagas of the tribe, but he was whisked from Morkai's jaws by the rune priest Heimdall and introduced into the ranks of the Space Wolves. Under the teachings of Heimdall, Njal learnt to harness the destructive power of nature itself. Over many hard years of fighting and fasting upon the storm-wracked peaks of Fenris, Njal has manifested a psychic talent to rival any in the Imperium. At the Battle of Gorswirl, Njal avenged his mentor Heimdall by blasting apart a dread bloodthirster of corn. He then scattered its minions to the four winds with an ice storm that stripped the crimson flesh from their bones. From that day on, Njal had been known as the Stormcaller. His rise to high rune priest of the Space Wolves is a saga of daring and heroics, and even the hardiest feel a chill hearing tales of the unnatural tempest summoned by his hand the retelling alone enough to make the hoarfrost form in the thickest of beards. In battle, Nya bears a rune-covered staff that he has fashioned through his own quest and labors. Known as the Staff of the Stormcaller, it acts as a channeling rod for Nyal's psychic powers, while at the same time grounding and dissipating psychic attacks unleashed by his enemies. When swung in anger, the staff crackles with barely contained energies, and its blows strike with thunderclap force. In his younger days, Nyal wore power armor, but since being asked to join the Great Wolf's assault on the Renegade-held fortress of Kazark, he has taken to wearing tactical dreadnought armor. The Elder Rune Priest himself added the potent runes which covered the Terminator suit, sigils that glow with eldritch force as he summons the fury of the storm. 
The strangest of all Njal's tools of war is a mechanically augmented raven. At the Battle of Rust World, Njal saved the life of the Iron Priest Ulf Blackbrow with a deadly, accurate axe throw. The great blacksmith, a fierce man who did not like to owe anything to anyone, repaid the debt by forging Njal a cyber familiar that has in turn saved Njal's life more than once. The greatly enhanced Fenrisian raven is named Nightwing, and it acts as a spy and lookout for its master, as well as aggressively attacking any foe that strays too near. More than a few enemies that hoped to assail Njal while he was focused upon calling down the storms have instead found themselves attacked, Nightwing's metal beak viciously stabbing at their eyes. Alright, let's go over the Tempestus Discipline. Spell number one, Living Lightning. Witchfire. Living Lightning has a warp charge value of 6. If manifested, the closest enemy unit within 18 inches and visible to this Psyker suffers D3 mortal wounds. Then roll 1D6. On a 2 through 4, the closest enemy unit within 6 inches of and visible to that unit suffers 1 mortal wound. And on a 5 plus, it suffers D3 mortal wounds. So you can see how it's lightning that's jumping from unit to unit. Seems pretty good. Seems pretty fun. It's got a lot of character to it. You can really imagine it on the battlefield lightning bolts jumping from unit to unit it's not bad the next one is murderous hurricane it's a malediction murderous hurricane has a warp charge value of six if manifested select one enemy unit within 18 inches of the psyker until the start of your next psychic phase if that unit is not wholly on or within a terrain feature that unit cannot fire overwatch in the fight phase that unit is not eligible to fight until after all eligible space wolf units from your army have done so so the wind's hitting them so hard that they can't lift their weapons to fight very easily and can't lift their guns to fire. It's basically just a big, nasty, murderous hurricane like it's called. I get, there's a lot of fluff to it. If you're in a terrain feature, you're safe from it. So, you know, shelter, <laughs> shelter from the storm. I like it. It's another one that only needs a six. Um, I could see how that one would be pretty good if you were really worried about Overwatch, but also making a unit fight last is pretty good. Um, obviously, there are new models whose whole purpose is to do that, so that's a pretty good spell. Next, we have Tempest Wrath. Boy, they're all really named after storms, huh? <laughs> all right, Tempest Wrath, Malediction. Tempest Wrath has a warp charge value of, what do you know, 6. If manifested, select one enemy unit within 24 inches of the Psyker. Until the start of your next psychic phase, each time a model in that unit makes an attack, subtract one from that attack's hit roll. Yeah, just minus one to hit. That's shooting and combat. That's a, that's a go-to. I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna take a psyker at all with your space wolves, that's a very important spell. Minus one to hit. That's real good. All right, number four for Tempest's discipline is Instincts Awoken. It's a blessing. Instincts Awoken has a warp charge value of six. If manifested, select one friendly Space Wolves unit within 18 inches of this Psyker. Until the start of your next Psychic phase, each time a model in that unit makes an attack, the Assault Doctrine is considered to be active for that attack instead of the currently active Doctrine. If the Assault Doctrine is already active in your army, then on the unmodified Wound Roll of a 6, improve the armor penetration of that attack by 1. This is cumulative with the bonus from the Assault Doctrine. So it just makes you a little better at combat or a little earlier. So you either get your exploding sixes and your extra AP earlier in the game, or if you already have that, you get exploding sixes, another AP on top of it, and unmodified wound rolls of six improve the armor penetration by another one. So yeah, just makes you even nastier, even more aggressive than Space Wolves already are. I'm not sure it's as good as the first three, but if you really wanted to build around this spell I'm sure you could just take the fastest possible units like the new Outriders and just get them in combat as soon as possible and hit them with this it could be all right all right at number five we have Stormcaller it's a blessing and it's an aura Stormcaller has a warp charge value of six yep you guessed it if manifested until the start of your next psychic phase while their units is within six inches of this psyker friendly space wolves receive the Benefits of light cover. All right, so six inch range bubble of plus one to your safe. Not bad. I can see how that would stack really well with the one stratagem we're gonna talk about. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you could hit your guys with cover in the open. You could do Tempest Wrath to hit a unit for minus one to hit and kind of protect your guys as you're walking up the board. That's not bad because it's just friendly Space Wolves models. So your tanks get it, your dreadnoughts get it. 
I like that one. That's one I could see as he walks up the board with my line of dreadnoughts. Just give them all plus one of their save. I like that. And finally, we have Jaws of the World Wolf. It is a witch fire. Jaws of the World Wolf has a warp charge value of seven. Ooh, the first one that's not six. I thought they'd all be six. If manifested, select one enemy unit within 18 inches of and visible to this psyker. Roll 1d6 for each model in that unit, adding 1 to the result if the psychic test was 9 or more. For each 6 plus, that unit suffers 1 mortal wound. Alright, so it's a horde killer. You hit a unit of 20 orc boys, you roll 20 dice, and every 6 plus, they suffer a wound. But you add 1 to the result if the psychic test was a 9 or more. So if you roll hot, it could be a mortal wound on every 5 plus, which is really good. Then you're killing a third of the unit. If they're one wound models. So as Warhammer goes more and more towards multi-wound models, this will get worse and worse. It's already arguably one of the worst on the list, and it costs one more than the others. So I just don't really foresee this being a thing. But if you play Tyranids a lot in your meta or huge mobs of orc boys, this could be super helpful. You just open the earth and the jaws of the world wolf swallows the unit. It's pretty cool. If you got 30 Hormagons coming your way, the idea that if you roll hot enough, you could roll a 9 or more, and then it'll be every 5 up per model is slain, basically. So, yeah, I mean, that could be pretty nasty. You could kill like 8 of them. I mean, that's at least better than Smite. Still not my favorite on the list. Let's go over Nyal himself, and then we'll come back to this list and decide which spells would be best for him. Okay, so first thing to notice right off the bat is that Nyal Stormcaller is 140 points. He's 7 power level. At 140 points, he's 10 more than Ragnar. And we all know how points efficient and incredible Ragnar Blackman is. So right off the bat, you know that GW has put an insane premium on the fact that he's a Psyker. Let's go over his stats and what he's armed with and what his special abilities are, and we'll come back to whether or not we think 140 points is worth it. I'm sure you can already tell from the tone of my voice. So we have Nyal Stormcaller. He's got 5-inch movement, weapon skill 2+, plus, ballistic skill 2+, plus, strength 4, toughness 4, wounds 6, not bad. Attacks only 3. Womp womp, that's pretty bad. Leadership 9, save 2+. Plus. So he's equipped with a bolt pistol, Nightwing, Staff of the Stormcaller. You can only include one Nyal Stormcaller in your army. So you know what a bolt pistol does. Nightwing, you ready for it? Assault 3, 12 inches, strength 3, AP 0, damage 1, no abilities, total garbage, total waste of time. You wouldn't even like stop the game to roll those dice. 3 strength 3 shots at 12 inches. That's pitiful. I don't even know why it's even included in the game. If it gave him some sort of ability or was like one high strength attack at good AP or something, but it does, there's three shots at strength three at 12 inch range. Garbage. Staff of the Stormcaller. Melee. Strength plus three. AP minus two. Damage D3. All right. Now we're talking. So he's hitting a strength seven. AP minus two. And damage D3. That's not bad. Now, he only has three attacks, so that still not great, but I guess that's par the course for Psychers. They're not usually also great at attacking unless they're demons. Uh, so, let's go to abilities. He's got Teleport Strike and Angels of Death. As you'd expect, he's a Space Marine and Terminator armor. Lord of the Tempest. Add one to Psychic Test taken for this model. Okay, now we're talking. Plus one Psychic Test, that's huge. Or plus one to your Psychic Test. Then you have Staff of the Stormcaller. You can re-roll Deny the Witch Test taken for this model. Okay, so two roll, two rules in a row. One that buffs you casting spells and one that helps you stop spells. So he's pretty good at the Psychic Phase. Then he has Runic Armor, which gives him a 5 plus invul, which is funny because his Terminator Armor already gives him a 5 plus invul, so it seems kind of redundant. And then you have Psychic Hood. I'm sure you know what it does, but if you didn't know, each time you do a Deny the Witch Test, for, something, for this guy who's within 12 of the enemy, he can add one to the Deny the Witch test. So between that and Staff of the Stormcaller, you're adding plus one to your Deny the Witch, and you can reroll it. So he's shutting down spells. He can stop two spells a turn. So he's good if you just need some psychic defense. If you find yourself you know, in a meta with tons of psychers, 
this could be good. That being said, having one Psyker who's there just to stop other Psykers, if you know the missions of 9th edition, you know that that's a fool's errand. You don't want to bring a Psyker to stop other Psykers because if your meta is full of Psykers, it actually behooves you to have no Psykers so that you can take the secondary uh, Abhor the Witch and get five points for every Psyker you kill. Now, if you play against armies where they only bring like one Psyker, then you're probably gonna, not going to take Abhor the Witch because you can only get five points total from that. But, you know, if you face orcs with lots of weird boys or demons with all their leaders in psychic spells, uh, craft world with all their guys on jet bikes flying around doing spells, if you play in that sort of meta, then definitely don't take a Psyker so that you can take that secondary. Now, if you're just dead set on y'all or dead set on taking a Psyker, if it's like your favorite part of Warhammer 40k, Joshua, I'm talking about you, buddy. <laughs> If it's your favorite type of 40k and you just have to have a Psyker in your list, um, then he's obviously still going to be better than a normal Psyker. Now, we'd have to look at the points to really min-max it and see if he is. Okay, so I took a look real quick. A Rune Priest in Terminator armor, aka a Librarian in Terminator armor, is 105 points. So it's 25 more for him. So for 25 points, you're getting plus one to your psychic tests, and you can reroll deny the witch tests, and you can cast two and stop two. So that's definitely worth 25 points. If you're going to have a psyker at all with your space wolves, it needs to be Nyal Stormcaller. The only reason I could see not bringing him, but still bringing psychers, if you have some kind of fluffy Primaris only force. But I think Terminators fit in just fine with Primaris. So definitely still take Nyal if you're going to have any sort of psychers with your space wolves. He has a strat that's pretty good, so let's take a look at it. Cloaked by the Storm is a space wolves epic deed stratagem. It costs 2 CP. Use this stratagem in your psychic phase after resolving the effects of a psychic power from the Tempestus Discipline manifested by a space wolves psyker model from your army. Until the start of your next psychic phase, each time a ranged attack is made against a friendly Space Wolves unit within 6 inches of that psyker model, subtract 1 from that attack's roll. So, you successfully complete a spell, or a psychic power, and you pop this, and then you'll have a 6 inch bubble of minus 1 to hit. Now, one of your spells already is targeting a unit for minus 1 to hit, so that becomes a little redundant if you plan on using this each turn as you move up the battlefield. So I probably wouldn't take the minus one to hit uh, spell. I would take, you know, three of the others. But this is pretty good. Now, while we're looking at stratagems, I want to talk about runic wards. Because we talked about some people might feel like they have a need to bring psychers because of their meta, including tons of other psychers. So you need psychers to stop their psychers. But there's a stratagem for space wolves. It's a war gear stratagem. One CP. Use this stratagem in your opponent's psychic phase. After a psychic test is passed for an enemy psyker unit, select one Space Wolves unit within 12 inches of that psyker unit. The unit you selected can attempt a Deny the Witch psychic power by taking a Deny the Witch test as if they were a psyker. So as long as you're up close and personal, as long as you're within 12, which you're a Space Wolf, that's where you want to be, uh, you can just pop a CP and try to stop the spell. I think that's pretty good. It gives you options of not being forced to bring a Psyker even if your meta is full of Psykers. Or you're going to a tournament where you expect lots of Psykers, like lots of Thousand Suns and Demon players. Things like that. A lot of Craft World players. So yeah, I think this, those are the only two stratagems that really stand out of the Space Wolves. I don't have the Space Marine Codex in front of me, so I'm not positive if there's any in there that Nial himself can use. If you guys think of any, please comment it down below so we can all learn together. Okay, it's time to pick the best spells for Nyal. Now, I'm going to be picking these according to my personal list, which is tons of Dreadnoughts and things that could help that. So first off, Jaws of the World Wolf is out. I'm dropping that one. I'm going to kind of do a process of elimination here. Stormcaller is the light cover. I'm taking Stormcaller. It gives a 6-inch bubble of cover. And my Dreadnoughts with 2 plus saves, yes, thank you very much. Uh, then we have Instincts Awoken. That's the one that gets you to Assault Doctrine a little bit sooner. I'm going to scratch that one. I think there's 
a time and a place for that, or it could be really good, especially if you have some sort of Death Star unit of 10 Terminators. Yes, you want to get them even stronger. But since I run about 10 Dreadnoughts, there's not one certain one that I want to buff. I could see hitting Murder Fang or Bjorn with that, and that'd be pretty good, but I'm still going to scratch that. Tempest Wrath is the 6-inch bubble or no, you 24 inch range, you select an enemy and they're minus one to hit. Uh, that'd be a good backup for if you run out of CP or you just don't want to t use the two CP to give that six inch bubble of minus one to hit. So if you'd rather hit an enemy with that, because then it works in combat, I can see how Tempest Wrath would, would be really good. So we'll come back to that. Murderous Hurricane, you make it so your enemy doesn't fire Overwatch and they have to fight last. That's pretty good, but I have so many tricks up my sleeve for charging, rerolling, charging, make sure I'm the one charging so that I can fight first. I'm not too worried about striking last. Also, my primary lieutenant that I bring wears the armor of Russ, so I can already make someone fight last. So I'm going to scratch Murderous Hurricane. So it's looking like Living Lightning, which is basically Smite that can jump to other units. Tempest Wrath, which is 24-inch range, target enemy is minus one to hit. And then Storm Caller, a six inch bubble of cover. So take all that into account and make your decision if you want to have a Psyker. I personally like Nyal. I think he's good. I think he's clearly the best Psyker you can bring with Space Wolves. But I want to get into a little bit of tactics here and how I think about lists and meta and tournaments and things I might have to go against, as well as thinking about secondaries in ninth edition so we've already gone over abhor the witch the ninth edition secondary that basically benefits you to not take a psyker okay now if you are playing for fun it's just your local meta beer and pretzels or you're filming a battle report like i do then by all means take Nyal, have a blast take other librarians too just go wild but if you're going into this thinking about the optimal list or your optimal play style like at a tournament you're gonna have to expect at some point you're gonna face an army that has a lot of psychers and that benefits you to not bring a psyker so that you can take that secondary the other thing is at a hundred and thirty point no he's 140 points sorry my math earlier was wrong he's 140 so he costs 35 more than a regular librarian that already it's okay because those two really good bonuses he has, reroll deny and plus one to casting. But when you think of him in the context of 10 points more than Ragnar, is he doing more than Ragnar? You could argue yes if you're really getting off those bubbles of cover and minus one to hit and you bundle around him as you're walking up the battlefield with all your best units. Yes, minus one to hit and cover for your best units. It's pretty awesome. But there are other ways to get minus one to hit and cover. If you're using the correct amount of terrain, that shouldn't be an issue. You should be able to get either cover or make people shoot through dense terrain as you move up the board anyway. If you find you play in an area where you guys just don't use enough terrain, then yes, having a angry Terminator librarian that gives everyone cover and minus one to hit, it's pretty cool. So I can see there being an argument for him, definitely. I personally, when I'm going to a tournament and I'm preparing for a tournament, I want to skip as many phases as possible because when you get to those top tier games, people might put you on a chess clock. So you need to be able to move through your progressions quickly. Now my personal Space Wolf Army shoots over 150 shots a turn, plus a couple heavy flamers. So knowing that, I know that's going to take some actual time to roll all those dice. So any amount of the game that I can cut off effectively speeds up the whole length of the game. So if I don't have a psychic phase, I get to skip right past that. My movement phase is just boom, 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 get them up the board, done with movement phase. Then we go to shooting phase, which takes a while. And then if there's no psychic phase, well, psychic phase will come first, obviously. We skip the psychic phase. Then you go to shooting phase, which takes a while. Then that's probably the end of the first turn. So you can clock your first turn nice and quick. Then come turn two, you're going to have shooting and combat. So that takes even longer. So if you have one of those armies that does shooting, movement, psychic phase, and combat, you're going to be really hard-pressed in a tournament against top-tier talent. Um, if you have an army that's too big, it can really put the pressure on you if you're not moving fast enough. Now, 
I play against a local guy in tournaments often who runs a really big orc army and he's sweating and he's pushing and he's on a chess clock and he gets it all done, but just barely sometimes. I think I was in a tournament against him where he ended with two minutes left on his clock. So if you're good enough with your army, yeah, take build it however you want. But if you're not so sure how fast you can get done, then you need to cut corners in some places to trim down on the time. Now, I know I'm getting a little too deep into tournament talk here, and some of you visit this channel and visit my Space Wolf uh, videos because they're more about fluff and fun and stratagems. So I don't want to get too deep into the tournament talk here, but my personal army, I don't see myself taking a Psyker. If I find a good deal on him and I feel like painting him, yes, I'll absolutely add it and take advantage of minus one to hit and cover in the open with my three Redemptor Dreadnoughts that'll walk right in front of him. But for the most part, I just don't have 140 points to find. I would have to drop an entire Dreadnought, which goes against the whole concept of my list. So please, guys, chime in. I want to know, Space Wolf players, who uses this guy? Who uses regular Rune Priests? Do you find yourself bringing psychers in your list more often than not? Or are you more on my side of the fence where, one, it speeds the game up if you don't have a psychic phase, and two, you get a huge bonus if you don't have a psyker and your opponent does with the secondary Abhor the Witch? So let me know, guys, in the comments below. We're up to 1,300 subs. These spaceful videos get a few hundred views. So I know you guys are listening, and I'd love to chat with you. So... Let me know your thoughts on Space Wolf Psychers and if you're going to fit them in your list or not. This is Nick from Beer and Bat Reps. Please keep tuning in. I'm going to keep going through unit by unit with the Space Wolves. Sons of Russ, we're going to do pretty good in 9th edition. I can feel it. I'm enjoying it big time. I know the pandemic has made it so a lot of you at home haven't played as often. But when you can get them on the table, let me know in the comments how yours have done. This is Nick from Beer and Bat Reps. See you next time, guys. Cheers.